Hello, everybody. Yay, but you could join us today at Sipping and Painting Hampton or Sipping and Painting somewhere near Hampton. So um, I'm glad you all are with me today. So um, I want to let you know what supplies I have on hand. First, we have canvas. And uh, this is the picture that I'm going to be painting from called Dandelion. And then I have two jars full of water. I always go with two jars because then I don't have to run back and forth to get clean water. So you can uh, get jars. And I just use mason jars because they're nice and heavy and they, uh, you can swish the brushes around in them and not worrying about knocking them over. I also have the most important glass, a wine glass. So make sure you uh, get that. <laughs> Luckily for me, I had a bottle of Cabernet open from this weekend. I can't even remember what the occasion was. Oh yeah, I had a birthday party to attend, a Zoom birthday party that I attended. And so make sure you get your drink handy. And I also have a snack. So uh, I, this is my uh, healthy snack that is to counter the wine. So <laughs> get something fun. Also, I've got three brushes. I've got big, a big one inch flat, I don't know if you can see that, one inch flat brush squared across the top there. Then I have a half inch flat brush and a small round brush. And these are all the long handle kind. And that's mostly because I'm working in an easel. Uh, typically we use long handle brushes when we're working in an easel so that we can uh, look at our painting and then step back from it and work and you're kind of working a little bit further away. The short handled brushes are usually for closer work that you're doing on a desk. If you're working in watercolor, you can use the short handle brushes. So that is what I have available here. I also have a uh, rag to, uh, blot my brushes on. Whenever we're working with acrylic, we always want to control the paint and the water on the brush. So I just have a rag. You can also use paper towels or napkins or whatever you have handy to blot your brushes off on. And I just got paint and I'm using a paper plate. So nothing fancy for a palette, just a paper plate. And I have acrylic paint, which uh, is water-based or water soluble. And I have white it, actually, I have five colors on here, but I actually only needed four. I poured out the fifth one without realizing uh, it was kind of a different color. So really all you need is white, blue, black, and teal. Um, I have two different color greens. One is just a lighter green than the other one. So I think this is more teal. That's more Kelly green. But um, in this painting, you can uh, change up colors anyway. So you can use all of your creativity and it doesn't have, even have to be those colors, but uh, you don't need a whole lot. So I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna get started by drinking. How about that? Cheers. You should all enjoy your drink. I have a, uh, a Robert Mondavi that's been aged in bourbon barrels. So it's not only wine, it's wine that has met bourbon. I love that idea. So has a nice flavor to it. All right. So now, just to get started, I'm gonna just wet the canvas with water to get it started. And in this case, my canvas been all wrapped up, and we just want to uh, get a little comfortable using the brush on the canvas. And this will kind of loosen this up. So just dipping the big brush into the water jar, and I don't know, it's a little bit lower than my camera I think but um, just dipping that into the water jar and wetting the whole canvas with water so you can do that to start and I'll I'll let you do that I will say that I uh, normally would have music going in the background but I guess YouTube is particular about the copyright so you can play well I guess if you played music and it was recorded that would be a problem too but you can use little headphones little earbuds and uh, have a little soundtrack in your, in your head, or one bud to hear me and one bud to hear the music, something like that. But just wetting that canvas with water. And uh, give that just a second there. I like that some of you have a party, and I saw that at least one person had a dog. I love 
I love the Zoom pets. So you can always show off your Zoom pets. We have no Zoom pets here. Well, we do. We have a Zoom goldfish, but it's not very affordable. that is not fun. Not a fun pet to show off. <laughs> Although, it might be a fun pet to paint. Paint is rather fun to paint. Yes. All right. So now, now we got a little loosened up. Got to wet our canvas with water. So now, I'm sticking with this big brush, and I just uh, took it out of the water jar. Whenever you're not using your brushes, it's a good idea to leave them in the water jar so that they don't dry out because acrylic paint will dry on the brushes and then you can't get them clean. What we want to do is leave them uh, wet or at least half you know, wet when we're not using them. And then at the end of the evening, you can clean them all off in the sink. But I took that big brush out of the water jar and I'm uh, sort of uh, getting all the extra water on it by rubbing it on the lip of the jar. And now I'm gonna dip that brush in the white paint to start. And I'm gonna start with the white, I'm loading that big brush up with white paint. And then I'm gonna dip the corner of the brush in the teal and I'm gonna mix myself up a little bit of light teal there. I want it mostly white and start really light with the teal. And I'm just gonna start in on that background with some really light teal paint going. And it's kind of a C shape off on the left side of the canvas with that teal paint. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of that and keep it pretty light to start, mostly white and just a touch of teal on the brush to get that started and we can get some paint on the canvas. And I know I paint pretty quickly, that's kind of my habit since I've done it a lot, but I'll, uh, let you take your time and get some paint started on your canvases there. And I'm doing this in a C shape, going off to the left hand side of the canvas, but it's so light, it might even be hard to see. I'll hold that closer to our camera here. You can kind of see that paint just getting started there. Much better, thank you. There we are. Yeah, we'll, we'll hold that up. Let's take a look at that. All right. And make sure you keep your snacks away from your paint. Last time I, I splattered my snack with uh, paint. You want to make sure you keep that away from the paint because acrylic, not tasty. I don't know. I've had better clementines. Maybe I should stick to the wine. <laughs> well, the wine was made of grapes. It's almost like healthy, right? All right. So now I'm going to dip that brush back into the white paint and I'm just going to continue adding some teal around here and if you want to have a nice blendy background then you want to kind of keep working the paint wet in wet so you can add a little bit darker teal around the outside left hand side of that whole C shape and blend it into the area that you already painted. Now I'm going in all different directions with these brush strokes and that'll kind of help blend it in together too. So I'm just twisting my hand all around in different directions to just kind of keep that blend going. And the, the paint's still wet, so it's, it's just picking up what I had already had on there in the lighter paint. So you can see, I'll hold that up in just a sec, that I'm getting a little bit darker C around the first area of color that I had. So we have more white mixed with the paint on the inside of the letter C and more teal mixed with paint with white paint on the outside of the letter C. And I'm just mixing that all around 
if one color starts to overbalance the other, you can clean off that brush really well by swishing it around in the water jar and blot it on the paper towel. And then you can use just a damp brush to go over those two areas and blend them in together. So in other words, go over the transition point of those two colors. And that will also help blend the colors together if, if you're not getting that blend. So that will look like this. All right, got our nice dandelion here. Dandelions always better in paintings than they are on my lawn. Been trying to get rid of them, but uh, they look nice in this piece of art. I also like how this art is kind of mid mod. It kind of goes with that um, sort of snooze. Uh, you know, the the breakfast place it has that like mid mod decor. I like that whole thing, and. Uh, it's very trendy now. So I, I always, by habit, drop that brush into the water jar. So I just um, get the excess water out of it by rubbing it on the lip of the jar and then blotting it on the paper towel by just kind of tapping it, to, or on the, uh, I have a shirt here in this case, just kind of tapping it on there to get that excess water off of it. So now, you can see on our sample, it gets darker as it goes out towards the uh, outer corners of the canvas. So I'm going to continue to add a little bit more teal. Now I'm going with more of the pure teal as it came out of the container. So it's getting pretty dark as it reaches the edge of that canvas around the outside of that C shape that I had started. And I'm going to do that around the whole outside edge there top and bottom. And actually, if this C, it's going to start curling all the way up off the right hand edge of this canvas here. It's funny, I can hear the scratch scratching in here now because I don't have music and that's unusual for me at work. I can never hear myself painting. It's kind of noisy. It kind of makes its own little percussion section. And if you're not getting that smooth transition, here I switched the brush around a little bit in the water jar, enough to get about half the paint off. You can see, uh, maybe you can see that there's still paint on the brush. And I just uh, kind of rested it on the edge of the jar and kind of got the extra water out of it, but it has half paint, half water, and I can go over that edge and use that to blend as well. So with acrylic, you're really always trying to control the amount of paint and water on the brush at the same time. And it takes a little bit of practice, which is why the more you paint, the better you get. So you can tune into all our classes and you'll get better and better with this. So there we have that started. And I'm looking at mine, and sometimes you need to make some adjustments. And I swished that brush all the way in the water jar on mine. Now I've got it really clean because here I have kind of a rough transition. So I want to soften that using only water. But this is very, you know, everybody's painting is a little bit different. So I'm telling you what I'm doing on my painting in case it informs something that you're doing on yours, but everybody's is a little different. Another thing you may need to do, depending on your own personal painting, is go back to the beginning with the white paint. So cleaning that brush off completely by swishing it all around in the water jar and now starting with white paint all over again like I did at the start and then adding just a touch of teal. So I start with the very light. That's another way you can get that blend going if you kind of want to start over with the earlier colors. So you can continually readjust the blend that you have by cleaning off the brush and going back to an earlier color. It's just really important to get the brush clean if you go back to a lighter color. So like here, I'm gonna totally clean the brush because I wanna go back to pure white because I have enough uh, teal on the canvas here already to pick that up. And now if I just pick up pure white, it'll go back to light, 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 light green. So, and I'm going all around the different directions with this brush stroke to get a very uh, random texture going on the background. 
Now, the background of this particular sample is very smooth, and this is totally up to you as an artist, like how rough or smooth you wanna go. I will say that it, the smoother that you make that background, the more it'll recede visually into the background. So it'll make your dandelion appear further uh, forward in the composition. So you may wanna choose to do that, kind of really smooth out that background, but um, some people find that's difficult to do. And it, you know, art should be fun and pleasant, not difficult. Like if it's difficult, we're not having enough fun. So there's either, there's two things you can do either paint the way it comes more naturally to you or drink more wine. Those are the two ways. So, or maybe a combination of both. Except for the kids, of course. Of oh, so, yes. <laughs> yeah, they have no choice. They just have to have fun, but uh, you know, kids, that comes more naturally to them, right? Because <laughs> they don't have to uh, worry about, you know, where to hang up the painting at the end of the evening. They live that carefree life. Speaking of which, hanging up the painting, I always go around the edges of the canvas so that uh, I finish the edges. So right now we have this white edge and I'm gonna paint that with the uh, teal paint because that is called a gallery wrap and it's a trick that galleries use on these canvases so that they don't have to buy uh, frames for all the work and you won't have to either. You can just hang it right over the fireplace tonight when you're done with it if you paint all the edges and it, it'll look nice and finished when you're done. So wherever the paint reaches the edge of the canvas, like here, just go all the way around that edge as well. So there's that. Do we have any kids with us tonight? Or is it, whew, is it just us, just us grown-ups tonight? I saw there was a, there was a pet, somebody had a cute dog. Yeah, well, I know we have a, party, but I can't see who's at the party. I have my own kid here, but I have an old kid, old college age kid. All right, I'm gonna leave that teal drying there for just a second. Let me uh, let you know a couple of things about sitting in Painting Hampton. We do have masks. Uh, for sale right now, which are really pretty cool. So we're doing this background that's all blendy, and we have these masks that are also all blendy. These are uh, sort of Monet's inspired patterns. So they're kind of uh, kind of tie dye, kind of uh, a kind of nice watercolory. They're very relaxing looking, and uh, when you wear them, it'll just it'll just help relax you. And we also have ones with our sipping and painting logo on it. There's Checking to see, make sure I don't hang, uh, put that upside down. Let me show you, I have one unwrapped as well. That will look like this. Got our little sipping and painting masks. I think these are adorable. You can't wear them while I'm on camera, but I'm definitely gonna wear that when I go out. And if you want one of these, we're selling these at the studio. So you can always come by and pick up masks or kits for our upcoming classes. We, have that going on at the studio. And we do have a little outdoor patio, so you can come and say hi as well, and we can talk to you outside on the patio. That's kind of fun. Thea, can I do a quick plug for the uh, mask kits? Yeah, sure. Okay, so we also have uh, white cotton masks, like the black ones, uh, three ply, and they're, they're plain. But we, I put five of them together in a kit, and so you can have a little party and paint five masks. It comes with brushes and paint and um, uh, you know, all the stuff that you need to, to make to create your own uh, hand painted mask. And those kits are $35. They're on sale or they're uh, for sale in the studio. Thank you, Thea. I appreciate oh, it. Okay. So you can not only get multiple masks, but you can decorate your own. Yes. And people have done the cutest cool. thing. Like, like one family did all five different uh, masks as animals. And so they had like a cheetah, okay. and a lion, and a you know cow, and a dog, and a cat. It was so cute. I love it. I've seen ones painted with mouths, and oh, there's all kinds of cute ideas out there. And also, haven't you found you need? You're going to need a lot of these masks. It's the new fashion accessory, and so there's always one in the laundry, and so you're going to need multiples. 
right? So thanks for letting me give a plug for our masks. Yeah, so yeah. definitely more masks, the, the more masks, the better. So now I have my uh, teal paint and I want to make my uh, area around the left hand side of that C and the bottom there even darker. And so now I'm going to pick up the teal paint and load up the brush and a little bit of that blue paint. And here I have, it's kind of a royal blue. So, and like I said, it doesn't matter uh, what colors you've chosen for yours. If you're creative with your color, just use whatever you've got there. But I'm gonna use teal and royal blue for these two to start. And I would say mostly teal and a little bit of royal blue on the, the big brush. And whenever I start with the brush, it is come out of the water jar and just getting all the excess water out of it by tapping on that shirt or paper towel to get the extra water out of it. And here again, going all the way around that edge with the paint and all the way around the edge of the canvas as well. We got that going. I especially want it dark as I get up here in the corner. I'm following this sample here and I want it to be really dark when it gets up to that corner. So going around there. Another way to blend paint in together, since we're always controlling the water and the paint on the brush, is by thinning the paint itself out with water. So sometimes you just want to use uh, water to make the paint translucent. So you can mix up a little bit of water on a wet brush and get the paint, and then it gets to be sort of a watercolor consistency. And you can cover over previous layers and it'll be a little bit translucent. So that's kind of a, an option too. You can see I, when I spread that out on there, I'm just using water. So it kind of lets me see those layers through each other. That's another way to think about balancing out that acrylic paint. And I want to keep that going, that darker outside edge. So now I have sort of run out of the teal and this is going to be more pure blue on this brush now. I'm dipping that big brush in the blue paint and I'm going to go along those edges with the pure blue. Another way that I'm using the brush to transition the colors is by overlapping the previous layer with these brush strokes. And some of the brush strokes are longer and some shorter. I'm very much randomizing the brush strokes so that um, it appears to blend just because uh, we're getting sort of random coverage in those areas. So you'll see like sometimes it pokes further up into that area and that when you stand back um, kind of looks makes it look like it blends together more. I'm getting all blue around that edge. I'll hold it up in just a minute when I'm done with that pure blue going all the way around. And I'm going to pick it up and not only show you, but also paint the bottom edge of my canvas as well, because now I've reached the bottom edge. Sometimes I finger paint too, like here. I saw it dripping, so I'm using my thumb to blend it in. And by the way, I use um, those kind of gloves that you get, you know, when you, when you like color your hair or whatever, little latex gloves. And I just do that because I don't like to get painty. It's not toxic paint. You can always wash it off with soap and water, but I just, prefer not to get painty, that's my own kind of personal thing. So let me hold that up and you can see how that transition is going. You can see some of those brush strokes are longer and some are shorter. When I hold it back, it blends more visually, you can see, than it does when I, when I show you up close. Keep in mind that as the artist, you're sitting right next to the work and as a result, you're seeing details in the painting that the viewer will really not see. So imagine there in your living room, relaxing many feet back on your couch with a glass of wine and gazing at your um, beautiful dandelion picture over your fireplace. So they're seeing that blend together from a distance. So you don't have to worry about uh, each individual brushstroke. I think sometimes people get very um, uh, frustrated with themselves if each individual brushstroke isn't perfect, but you don't need to be because that is not the way a viewer is judging your work. They're taking the whole thing in. They're not looking at each individual brushstroke. So you should have fun with it and let those brushstrokes fly in all different directions. Do what is comfortable for you because you're, you're 
uh, your guests will enjoy your work in spite of all the little back and forth of those brushstrokes. So now I want those very, uh, the very far corners to be the darkest paint. And you can go pure black on this or you can just mix uh, a tiny bit of black in with the blue. I'm gonna start by loading that brush up with mostly blue paint and then just pick up a corner of, uh, with, the, with the corner of the brush, a little bit of the black paint. Mine are kind of overlapping on this plate because they kind of blended together when I poured them out. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with just a little black in there and not go totally dark because I can always make it darker, but it's easier to just start lighter. So adding that very dark in the corners to start. Oh, and I forgot to go all around, around the bottom edge, so I gotta do that too. Let's pick that up, do that bottom edge up. Let's see, gotta show that on camera. I gotta do that bottom edge. And that's gonna be blue paint, a little bit of mix with black, just going around those edges. And sometimes I go back up onto the front of the canvas so that it blends in there nicely with what I already have around the front side, just to finish off that gallery wrap and make it look nice and finished. Let me show you how that looks. There, you can see that blend wherever the color reaches the edge of the canvas. Just want to match that up. Got to take time to do all these kind of housekeeping things because that's what makes your art look nice. You need to take care of the little details. And finishing that top edge with a little blue. Let me show you that. That's what I'm working on there. And you know, clean it off when I go to a lighter color. Back to that teal to finish that little, little edge up. Let's see. I'll have to. Oh, I didn't even get the upper right hand side. So let's let's take a look at this. Now we have most of those edges covered. It's always good to step back from your work and take the whole thing in, and then you can see if you need to make any changes and adjustments. So here I have pretty much a blend that I'm happy with. It's a little bit more textured than our sample. So I could smooth some of that out. Or, let's see, or I could leave it a little rougher. It's totally up to you. Let me caution you, I'm noticing this when I'm fixing this. Uh, if the paint is half dry, and this is true of acrylic paint, then it'll start to pick up funny little brush strokes if you overwork it. So I always say, especially at the studio, that is why we drink. Because we have to watch paint dry. We do want to let it dry so that um, we can layer subsequent layers of paint over it. If you keep overworking it, then it will just fight you. So we, we don't want to, we don't want to fight the paint. We want the paint to cooperate with us. So I'm going to let that dry a little bit and then I can make those little adjustments. Normally I would let you wander around the studio, but I will let you, um, let's see, hum amongst yourselves. <laughs> you can uh, hum a little tune or uh, I get things. Some of you have a party going there so you can enjoy your party. It was so lonely the, uh, this past few weeks in the studio that I'm actually talking to the cardboard Bob Ross. That's pretty oh. <laughs> I don't even have a card. I need a cardboard Bob Ross here. That's what we're missing. He's my only friend these last three months. It's been really sad. <laughs> miss everyone. Can't wait to have everyone back in the studio again soon. Yeah. We're just doing something a little different now. Gotta, gotta roll with it. That's what we're
we're doing. I'm adjusting those parts of my paintings that were, or part of my painting that was already dry. I'm just smoothing out some of those uh, brush strokes that I felt stood out a little bit too much. So you can work your background until you're happy with it. In acrylic paint, I don't even think I mentioned, we always work background to foreground because we're layering the paint uh, from what is furthest back in the composition to what's most uh, closest to the viewer, most mostly in front in the composition. So in, in this case, our dandelion's right in front. So I'm starting with the background and we'll work the dandelion last. Of course, the more, more I work this, probably the smoother my background will end up looking. And sometimes it's just fun and relaxing to keep smoothing out that background too. I think I also want to put a little bit of light blue or or light teal all the way around on this right hand side too. I don't want it to be totally uncovered with the uh, white of the canvas. I'm going to put a little bit of tone there too and I'm going to do a combination of white. I'm loading the brush up with the white paint and just getting a tiny bit of blue and a tiny bit of teal on the brush to start. Oh, that's even too much so I'm going to clean up the brush and then just get white paint on there. You see where I have the paint on there already? I'm just gonna use plain white to spread that out now. And you see immediately that lightens that right up. Because I want a little bit of color on the upper right hand corner as well. Just looking at the sample, I was seeing that there was a little bit of color on that side. So I want to be faithful to my sample. Now, of course, nobody's going to see my original sample uh, when you hang up your painting in your house. So you don't have to match it up exactly. Just make a work of art that'll make you happy and proud. And like here, I have a rough transition. I swish that brush around the water jar, picking up plain white paint on it, and I'm gonna just go over that edge with white. And that smoothed out that rough transition. And here again, another rough transition, doing the same thing. So there's a constant back and forth with that sort of adjustment. Cleaning the brush, loading it back up with white paint. There's always those little adjustments that I'm making. And I'm working that brush with a little bit of color on it now into the center so that I'm going to end up with the, uh, it's pretty white in the center, but just a little, little, little tone of color there. And I want to make sure I go around those edges too. Finish my gallery wrap. I don't even know what's going on up here. I better take it down so I don't make my background all painty. I forgot to do the top edge. Remember to do the, the top edge as well. Got to do that. Get my dark blue on the corner. And that is blending into that green there. You see that? There we go. And by the way, I should have said this at the beginning. I was wearing an apron. Hopefully you have your painty clothes on so you don't get painty because acrylic, acrylic will stay with you if you get it on your clothing. If you do get it on your clothing, if I have said this too late, uh, 
you can use rubbing alcohol while it's still wet or this evening uh, that'll help get it out but I do recommend you have special dedicated clothes for painting or use an apron you can always use an old t-shirt or an old uh, button-down shirt like they did in elementary school remember way back in the day we used to bring an old shirt and use that as a smock it's a fun thing So and if I see, I'm looking around the painting now and seeing different things. Right there, I noticed there was a little gap. So I'm matching that up. And sometimes you start to apply the paint and think, oh, that was too light. So then you have to pick up a little bit of darker paint on the brush. Sometimes you have to clean it up because now I see that's too dark. So now I'm going to just use water to spread that in. And there you go. So it's always making these little adjustments. And here I have a little light gap. Let me show you that closer up. I have a little light gap there and I'm going to fill that in with some darker paint at the bottom. I was working that before but the paint was still wet and like that was a place where he was picking up funny textures from the brush because it was half wet and I needed to wait for it to dry and I still have spots like that down here because I worked that dark last so I'm gonna have to wait for that to dry. I just swished that brush around on the uh, shirt there to get it clean and I'm gonna pick up my drips and use my just damp brush to pick up some of those drips too. So I'm always making those adjustments. It's like a constant back and forth. I'm looking around the painting and seeing what needs to be done. One thing that's nice about these Zoom classes is that I actually get to tell you how I think when I paint. Um, a lot of times at the studio, it's more entertainment and I get to explain the step uh, and then set you off on your own. And I can always answer questions as I go around, but I'm not sure that I um, get to explain all the stuff I'm thinking about. So um, sometimes you, know, you may not know what's going on in my head uh, unless you knew what to ask. So it's kind of nice. We're getting a little bit more instruction. So when you do come back to the studio, the people who participate in the Zoom classes, you'll be the expert painters. You'll know all the secrets. So that's nice. I'm filling in some of those little, little gap areas, just smoothing that out. And I've got almost my whole background done now. I'm going to give you another couple minutes to work your backgrounds and then we'll start in on our dandelion. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. You can unmute your microphone and let me know if you do have any questions. Is there a good time coming up that we can switch out our water? Mine's pretty ruined. Oh, sure. Now would be a good time. Yeah, I, I have two good. water jars here. But go ahead and freshen up your water in the water jar. Cool, thanks. And by the way, the painting that I'm making now will go up for sale at the studio. I'm going to deliver them all into the studio at some point, and you can uh, buy the originals too. We can you can own an original at a bargain. We always put them up for sale on our sale table, whatever recent work of art we've done. Yeah, can I add that we have a bunch of them piling up here now. So if anyone's oh. for some original art, come see me during studio hours. All the ones that we did. By the way, I didn't mention my Venmo is there. So if you want to uh, 
pretend you're in the studio and uh, where there's a tip tray, you can always hit me up on the Venmo. So my Venmo is at Ernstein Arts and I put that up on, on my uh, little, little zoom square, zoom, zoom rectangle, so you can see that as well. And I really do encourage people, please, uh, since the uh, classes are free, if you enjoy your class, then I would really love it if you would uh, tip your artist because we're all just trying to hang in there until until things get better and we can uh, open up the studio and have some more fun in here. So thank you so much for supporting a local family owned studio as well as independent local Denver artists like Cynthia. Yay. Yeah. We are a one-off independently owned studio. Nancy is the owner and uh, so it is, it, it is especially wonderful that you're supporting local at this time. You're doing good for your community by hanging in there with us. Hanging in with your community of artists. We're all still here somewhere. Oh, us little artists. Actually, I've got some, got some commission art going on. I'm doing a signing board for a party and a pet portrait. I saw some of you had pets. That's always fun. You can always paint those guys. I should let my background dry. I should chill for a minute there so I can do my dandelion. Hopefully you've got your water jar freshened up or your refill your wine. Oh, when I didn't ask you guys, is anybody celebrating something tonight? Do you have any events in June? Because I have to have an excuse to make a toast, right? Actually, I don't know my toast sheet. I have to remember my toasts. Feel free to unmute yourselves if you want to share something. Yeah. I'm celebrating the end of the workday. <laughs> All right. That's always good. <laughs> Let's see. Do I have a good work toast? Uh, to good health and a peaceful world. Yes, no, no, for work. A work toast. Oh, for work. <laughs> <laughs> to good health and a peaceful world. To good health and a peaceful workplace. How about that? <laughs> Cheers. Obviously, we need to print our toast sheet again. <laughs> remember all oh, our toasts. Well, seems pretty applicable across the board. <laughs> I always joke about drinking, but the truth is I've done precious little drinking in this time and I've forgotten all my toasts. I should, uh, I should be doing some more, right? <laughs> then I would remember them. <laughs> but I only have my, my kids here. Oh. Uh, my husband, he gets to do other Zoom calls and <laughs> so I'm not there when he's got the beer. Oop. Thanks. Making noise now. All right, so now I have my background all done there and all dry. And we can add our dandelion in. <laughs> There's always something. If you keep looking at it, maybe you keep finding more, more things to fix like me. Maybe I should stop looking. Sometimes the paint dries a little clear or light and so that's just from filling in some of that where it seemed to dry a little light for me All right, I should call that good. So now we've been working with this big brush the whole time and I'm just gonna leave it sitting in the water jar now. And uh, generally speaking, that's not fantastic for the brushes, but uh, it, will keep the, it will keep you from ruining the brushes. We're not working with them for so many hours that we need to uh, worry about ruining the brushes. Um, 
if you leave them sitting in the water jar. If you're going to work for many hours with acrylic paint, then you might want to stop, clean an individual brush when you're done with it, and then come back to your work. But uh, since I'm working just for a couple hours, I can leave it sitting in the jar. The only danger is if you leave it long term, uh, the glue that holds the ferrules on, which is the metal part that holds the hair to the wood part of the brush, then the glue in it can uh, loosen up over time, and that's uh, not good for the brushes either. But you don't want them to dry because you want to be able to clean them at the end of the evening. And I didn't speak about this on the last time I did a video. I want to mention to you the way I clean brushes. You, you guys never see this at the studio because we do it after everybody leaves and you don't have to. But since you guys are working at home and have to clean your own brushes, let me uh, clue you in as to how we do that. I always put a little bit of uh, soap, like liquid soap in my hand, and I uh, scrub the brush around in the palm of my hand with the liquid soap, run it under the water until it's clear and then uh, blot the brushes off and just um, flatten them out the way they come between your fingers and let them dry just resting horizontally on the surface. I usually just leave them next to the sink. So uh, that is the way we properly clean the brushes. My grandfather did art and he taught me that and that he taught me always be kind to your materials and you'll have them your whole life. In fact, I have his brushes still. So you can even pass them along if you're good enough to your art equipment. So now I'm gonna to switch to a smaller brush and we wanna build our dandelion on a long stem that comes from the bottom left hand corner or bottom left hand side of our canvas and curves gently up about two thirds of the way or maybe even three quarters of the way up our canvas on the left hand side and it comes to a point so that we can build our little center starburst there. So I'm gonna, you can switch to either a medium or a small brush. I'm gonna use the small brush because a small brush, the smaller the brush, more hand control you have. So I always figure I can start small. If I wanna go bigger, I can always go bigger. It's easier to uh, go bigger than to, you can't fix what's over the background once you have it there. So always build things up slowly. So now I've got that little skinny brush and you can also start lighter and go darker. I can start with my blue paint or mix it uh, or start black. It's up to you how dark you want that stem to be. Or uh, you can either use teal, black, blue, some combination of those. But we do want it to be dark enough that it stands out against our background. So even darker than the paint that's on there now. So I'm gonna start from that lower left-hand corner and you can either build this up in short little strokes, or you could, if you're supremely confident, do one long stroke up to that point. I will say, whenever I make long lines like that, if I do it all in one go, I found that my hand follows where my eye has already gone. So I kind of um, lead up to that point visually and let my hand follow. So it's kind of up to you how you wanna do that. That would be what that looks like. Or you can just build that up with short little strokes so that you're more certain of where your stem lands. It's totally up to you. You got to find out what's comfortable for you as the artist. If you're like, oh my god, I tried that out and it didn't work, then don't despair. Acrylic paint is erasable, believe it or not. You can dip your uh, either paper towel or rag in, in plain water. I had that extra jar of plain water and you can use that as an eraser too while it's still wet. So don't despair if you, if you feel like you've made a mistake. That's another trick that I never get to show at the studio because I kind of do it all in one, one go, but actually acrylic paint is more forgiving than you would initially think. But I'm gonna put that back in there because I was happy with where that was. So I'm using my little skinny brush and I'm gonna build up that stem going from the lower left-hand side and up about two thirds of the way up the canvas with a gentle curve, kind of, you know, like the letter D kind of curving out on the right-hand side of the shape and back towards the left-hand edge of the canvas. And I'm just gonna kind of let that trail out because we're gonna add that starburst there in just a minute. Right now, 
I'm just using black paint. I didn't even mix the colors for that. And just using that little skinny round brush there. I don't know if you can see that, just a little skinny, skinny round. And making our stem. And in this sample, there's just a little bit of white added because I guess the um, color on the edge was so dark that the artist wanted it to stand out a little. So that's an option too. If you feel like it's not, mine is pretty, you can see it against the background, but if you can't and you want to, you can add a little bit of white in there. That's what that would look like. I just uh, cleaned off the brush by swishing around in the water jar, blotting it on the paper towel, picking up a little bit of white and mixing it in with my already wet black paint on the stem just coming up from the bottom there. So that's an option too. There we go. And I got my stem all up in there. I'm gonna let that sit for just a second, let you catch up to me. I, let's see. So we have Zoom classes on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday right now. And they are free in the month of June, so you can have uh, you can have friends from around the country even join us. But if you have local Denver friends that want to join us, uh, they can also come and pick up materials at the studio. Just um, sign up and let us know they are coming to get those, and you can come and get kits for these paintings as well. Let's see, we got that going there. So now I just let the top of that uh, stem just kind of end off there in a rough ending. Uh, but I want to use that point to start my starburst. And I'm going to press the brush to the canvas and lift it up and off as I move away from it. Now you see there, what was bothering me about that first stroke was that you can see the texture of the canvas showing through and that means that the paint is a little bit dry. So I'm gonna dip that brush in the water jar and leave it with a little bit of water on it. And then on my plate, I'm mixing a little bit of water with the paint to get it um, kind of the consistency of skim milk. And then it'll flow better on my brush, on my canvas. And so I can press the brush to the canvas and lift it up and off as I go all the way around in an asterisk shape to get that starburst going. And you can see I'm not being real neat about this to start. I'm just going to go all the way around and get those strokes started there. And I'm using my little skinny brush for this to make those dandelion stems. And you can see where it's wet. It's picking up the paint. I might have to wait for that part to dry in the middle and then go over it with some black paint. But I'm going all around. And I want to make sure I keep that paint really very wet. And you don't have to go fast doing this. I'm doing this a little bit fast. I should go a little bit slower as I go around. And you can go pretty far out. Uh, these uh, little dandelion, uh, I wouldn't call them petals. What would you call them? Dandelion uh, thingies. They go all the way out to the left hand edge of the canvas and all the way to the top. And the ones on the right reach almost to the right hand side of that canvas. So they're pretty long too. Another thing you can do is twist the brush around in your fingers as you draw it away from that center. And that'll make that little brush stroke kind of smooth as well. So kind of twisting that brush around, it kind of helps keep the point on the brush as it paints. So, and I'm, you know, my hand's shaking a little bit, so they're not all totally straight, but I'm just going to go with that. I'm going to uh, chalk that up to, that's my style. According to Wikipedia or some other place I just liked, uh it is a seed head. Oh, okay. But like, I don't know, are there like names for the things that that hold on to the little white seed thingies? <laughs> you can see how much I know about gardening. I think if we can't find names we like, we should just make them up ourselves. I'll, That's I'll right. Them. Let's just make stuff up. 
Wikipedia, my favorite thing. What did we do before Wikipedia? We just had to guess. And I'm pressing the brush to the canvas, adding enough water to the paint to make it flow nicely. I keep putting down my plate so you can't see it, but I'm adding water and paint, making that sort of a watercolor out of that acrylic, twisting the little skinny brush around that, and then I'm pressing the skinny brush to the canvas, twisting it around as I lift it up and off as I come away from the center of that dandelion. And that way, when I lift the paintbrush up and off, I get kind of pointy ends there to my seed holders or whatever they're called. I probably should have researched that before I started. Get my dandelion. I thought I was an expert on dandelions because I had to pull them from the lawn last week. Have you guys been doing a lot of weeding? It's been weed season. My kids are very amused because every time we go out, we pull more weeds from the lawn. <laughs> I hear my kid chuckling in the corner there. <laughs> For my next act, I'm going to actually try to garden. I was going to try to grow zucchini because they say that's the easiest thing to grow. You can let me know if any of you have garden tips. So in some of mine are a little bit wavy. I think the artists who did this, wow, they just must have had a really steady hand because they're more straight strokes than mine are, but I don't, I'm not going to worry about that. I kind of like the randomness of the wave. I think it gives it a more natural look, or at least that's what I'm going to tell people. And if they're not perfect, these little ends, don't worry about that because you can always use them, uh, you can always cover over them when we do the next step, which is going to be all the little uh, white seeds that go over. Well, I guess they're white and dark. So um, if it's not perfect, don't uh, get upset about it. We'll just uh, hide them with our seeds. And right here in the middle, it's kind of picking up from the wet paint. So I have to go over that little middle, just making a little, little short starburst in the center there. Once again, according to Wikipedia, the whole thing that puff is called a pappus p-a-p-p-u-s and each pappus has a hundred to 110 filaments and on the ends of the filaments are the oval shaped seeds oh nice that explains why there are so many dandelions in my yard although i have heard that dandelions are edible and they're really good for you. So you can put them on a salad if you don't use chemicals on your yard. You can, but not, it's like the green leaves, right? You That's can also heard. wine out of them. Dandelion wine, Elton John had a song about it. Really, dandelion wine? All yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. It was on the flip side of Daniel, my brother, for us old people. That, your favorite, your favorite Elton John movie is on Amazon <gasps> Prime. <gasps> We can't play the music here, but we can at least talk about it. And some of my uh, little, uh, <laughs> little brush strokes here are longer than others, so they're all different lengths. And try not to, like I, I um, kind of make it a regular pattern here, try to stay away from that. I'm going to make this one longer so that I stay away from making a regular pattern. I am going over some of them twice to adjust them a little bit, but I don't want to overwork any one of these. Just like there, see if I, if I start working, it'll just make it worse. Another thing you can do is um, come from the outside and uh, press the brush to the canvas very lightly from the outside and then um, more heavily as you go in towards the center to make it wider. So you don't always have to work from the center out. It's up to you as the artist which way you prefer. I think it's easier for me to work them center out, but it's not, that's not the only way to do it. There's always more than one way in art. So now I have this nice big starburst there. I'm just filling that 
left hand side on mine. And then we can start putting in our little poofy, poofy seedlings. And I want to make some of these reach all the way off the edge of the canvas. So I have this guy reaching off the top. Let's make a couple of those reach all the way off the top. So they're different lengths. Some of them are darker, some of them are lighter. You can even make one like that one cross over. They don't all have to come exactly from the center. If you make one here, random here and there, it'll give a little bit of uh, natural uh, look to it. If they all come from exactly the center, then it might look a little kind of mechanical. We want to keep it really natural. Sometimes I think that the thing that makes art beautiful is the randomness. A little bit of, uh, you know, you have a lot of the strokes going in the same direction and then you have one going off in a different direction and that's what makes it beautiful. So cheers to that. I'm gonna let that dry for just a second. And by the way, uh, I do have uh, my other coworkers joining in on the Zoom classes. So I didn't do the Friday and Saturday nights. I think uh, Catherine and Katie and Vanessa are joining us as well. So you can get a different teacher if you join into our other Zoom classes. And it's really fun to, uh, you know, get everybody's different takes on how to do painting and also all the different paintings that we do. Tomorrow night we're doing a Colorado flag, so totally different subject matter. Our Colorado flag always being popular, but this one is a rustic one, so you can join us for that or tell your friends to join us. You can either have your Colorado friends paint our state flag or have your friends from far away join us and, uh, and they can enjoy our state flag and hang it up over their fireplace and wish they were here because it's so beautiful here in Colorado. So now I have my background structure and now I want to put in all those little uh, seedlings. So now I'm going to switch to my medium sized brush for that. And I just wet the brush off. It was sitting, it was just sitting here on my uh, counter and I want to wet it off to start it with. And then I can pick up plain white paint to start because we have white seedlings and we have dark seedlings. But I'm going to start with the white ones. I always sort of work light to dark on these. And I use the medium sized brush in this case because I have one that's, it's a half inch brush that's cut straight across. You can see that. And uh, I like it because if you just twist it around in your fingers, if you press it to the canvas and just kind of twist it around, you get a nice little, little circle there. It's kind of fun to work with. But that was not the best example to start. The thing was messy with my circle. But you can use that and kind of spin it around to get little, little poofy seedlings. And these are going to be very random. They're going to be some big, some small, some close together, some far apart. The white ones are kind of more visible against the dark background. So I'm starting where my paint was the darkest and going to put some plain white circles there. Just spinning those around with that big old brush. So just get a few little circles to start. Now these are about the size of a quarter because of the size of my brush. But if you don't like working with that brush, here again, you can use a smaller brush to give yourself a little more hand control. So I'm going to take that small brush out of the water jar, blot it on the paper towel, and get some white paint. And you can add white circles with that as well. And these white circles are going to be different sizes, and some of them are going to overlap my uh, little flower stems there. My little starburst that I did, or big starburst. And I'm just going to make little circles. If you're, you can use, you could use coins if you really uh, are having a hard time making circles. Mine are not perfect. What I'm going to do is just uh, go with the imperfection of them. And you can mix a little bit of water with the paint to make them kind of see through. If I just dip the brush in the water and draw it along the lip of the jar, 
and then dip it into the white paint. I can thin down that white paint till it's about the consistency of skim milk. And then I can do ones that are half see-through like that, where you can see the stem beneath it. Let me hold that up to the, to the camera. If you can see that one, you can see the stem just barely through it because the paint has been thinned out. And actually when it dries, it'll dry even a little bit clearer than that. And you'll be able to see that stem through it more. And then if you want it, uh, if you don't want to see the stem through it, then you can add a second layer of paint and cover that over. So if you start with thinned out paint, you can adjust that with another layer. And I'm going all around my flower with these little seedlings. And keep in mind that we want to keep the pattern random. So make some close together, like make a couple that are friends, and make some far apart. And we'll keep that pattern random and make some a little bit bigger, maybe some the size of dimes, some the size of quarters, some the size of nickels. You can just change it up as you go around the edges here dandelion and make some closer to the center and some further away towards the edges of your canvas. And here, oh, I don't know if you saw that. I had, um, like, let's say here where I uh, have a little bobble in the paint and I think, oh, I messed that up. That's a great opportunity to use one of these little seedlings to cover that over, and then nobody will ever know. Or like I tell my kids, if you make a mistake on the painting and someone looks that close, you just poke them in the eye with the brush. Right? No, no, don't do that. Don't poke them in the eye with the brush. My, my kids give me the eye here. But I'm just going around making different size circles then make some close together, some far apart. And right now I'm starting with just white paint, but there's plenty of those. My goodness, I don't know if I could even count these. There's like dozens. And actually I'm just doing ones that are about the size of a quarter and the size of a dime now, but there's ones that are even smaller, just little M&M sized circles too. So we'll add some of those little guys in there. Skittle size, right? I don't know. What, what, other, what other small things do we have? Small candy size. And I am making uh, some of these go over the um, little stems there. You can also make one or two that go over the center stem and overlap. I don't know if I totally cover over it because you don't want to look like it's breaking, but you can kind of uh, overlap the edges of your main stem with one or two of those poofy, poofy dandelion seeds. And here, I made a big one at the bottom here. Another thing that we do when we're working around a canvas is kind of balance things out. So you can put one, if you made one big one down here, you can put one big one way up here to kind of balance that out. I'm kind of always looking all around the canvas, stepping back from it and seeing how balanced it is. We want to make a, a collection of poofs that kind of, uh, some are big, some are small, but we want to spread them kind of evenly around the canvas. And now here, I have a little bit of uh, blue paint mixed in with my white, but I'm just going to go with that because we don't want to make them all pure white. I'm going to mix that in together and now we have a little bit of light blue going and we can work some of those in there. I can start to work a little bit of the darker color poof in among the ones that I already did. So I'm working with light blue now. Let me hold that up to the camera so you can see how that looks. See so have ones of different color. That's the color I'm working with now. We started with white, but now I'm going to light blue. And I usually, when I work these kind of things, go lighter to darker with my colors, although I don't know that, you know, there's any one way to do that right or wrong. Just have fun with it. There is no 
wrong in our, what, is, what does Bob say? Happy little accidents, right? There's only happy little accidents. So making a bunch of light blue ones, some big, some small. I'm working those all around. And you can even overlap them with your, your other poofs. There's, they don't all have to be separate. You can do some overlapping ones. They can be friends. And uh, there's always a trick I use at the studio when we're doing stars. You can also, if you want little tiny ones, you can dip the handle of the brush into the paint just dip the handle in and you can get really little tiny ones if you just want ones that sparkle. I can put a few here and there if you just want some really tiny dots. Can you see those little sparkles there? That's made with the paint dipped in, into the, in, of the, the handle of the brush dipped into the paint. So there is that technique as well. Get little sparkles. And this is one of those techniques. You could do this for a long time. It's kind of a meditation to go around and add all these circles. There's so, so many of them. It's the relaxing portion of the evening. And you can add a little water to the paint if you want some of those to be see-through. I don't want them all to be identical blue, so I'm going to make that one a little bit see-through. You can see that's how that, that one looks on the stem. You can see that little stem through it. I did, I cheated there a little. I used my finger to take up some of the paint, but you can thin it down with water and you won't have to cheat like I did. And I'm going over some of my stems where I made little weird looking bottles and I'm overlapping them so you can't see any mistakes that I did when I was making those. So that is a thing too. And make sure you step back from your work as you're doing it so that you can take the whole thing in, make sure it's balanced out the way you like. Right now, it looks like I need maybe a few blue ones on this side on the left. Oh, and another thing that you can do, you can also, um, make a few on the edge if you want to continue that illusion around the gallery wrap of the canvas. That's a nice, nice thing that we do at the studio when we finish the edges of the canvas and it makes it, you get that illusion there. And uh, it makes your gallery wrap look really nice. So now I have light blue and white and I want to continue to go a little darker. So I'm going to add a little bit more blue paint to my brush now. And I don't want it totally dark blue. I, at this point, I'm gonna just uh, add a little white to the blue paint. And you can do either blue or green or the teal. It's up to you. Just doing a combination of those. We'll make it a little bit darker. Actually, even more white, but that would be good. There we go. Let me hold that up and you can see that a little bit closer making them darker now. And make sure you make them big, some small, some close together, some far apart. Kind of stay away from regular patterns and... Oh, another thing that I just did is I had an area in the background that had kind of a rough transition, but I just painted a seed over it so you won't even see that. So if you, if you feel like you had any uh, parts that you wanted to change earlier, See, we're using the foreground to adjust that and nobody will ever know it wasn't perfect. So like I had, let me show you, I have a little drip here where the water had dripped and taken up a little bit of the paint, but I'm just going to paint a seed right over that. They're gone. Nobody will ever know. They'll think I did it perfectly unless they see this video. and I'm spreading those darker seeds out in the center 
and along the edge and all around. So funny hearing the scritch scratch of my painting because even when I'm working in my studio, I always have something, some music going or some podcast. I'm not used to hearing my own self painting. And making some of those little smaller droplets. And you can also uh, use that teal paint. And that's, that's the last color I'm going to use. Actually, I had blue on the brush still. So now I'm mixing the blue white with that teal. And we'll put some of those in there too. Let me hold that up and you can see that color. And actually, I should overlap some of these guys. That's that teal color. You can see that. And I'm going to overlap some of my seedlings. And be careful. Um, I just leaned my hand on the canvas. You want to make sure you, you don't do that where they're still wet. Otherwise, you might get little smudges. adding those in as well. So I want to let you know also, we do have uh, an outdoor patio on the studio space. And um, I think we're able to have host small parties out there. Uh, Nancy can give us a little more information about that. Technically, we're allowed to open up the studio for parties of nine or less. Um, but outside seems to be the safest thing at this point. So that's always an option. We have our little patio space. So we uh, could arrange something like that if you're interested. We'll want to talk to Nancy about that. Ooh, I like these little seedlings. And you can make some of them go all the way off the edge, too. I've been real uh, sort of putting them in the middle, but um, you can go right off the edge. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go around that gallery wrap with that guy that just went off the top there. That's how that looks. Make sure some of them go off the edge. Keep it, keep it random. And I'm making some of the dark ones go over the lighter area. And you can do this to your heart's content. But I'm just about done with my dandelion. I think, I think it looks pretty dandy. Let me add just a few more and then we'll call it good. So right now we're doing these classes at 6.30 on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And if you like, you can always uh, shoot me some tips in the Venmo tip jar. That would be always appreciated. Since we are working from home, you can also enjoy the classes that are taught by my coworkers, Vanessa and Katie and Catherine. And Sabrina might be joining us as well. All right. I have that just about done. This is one of those times where, as the artist, you want to take a step back. Uh, right now I'm seeing I want to dip the handle of my brush in some of the dark paint and make some little dark sparkles as well. Let me show you what that looks like. 
and that's going to be, I think, my last little step. I'm going to make some or little tiny dark dots, and I did that by dipping the handle of the brush into the paint and just tapping those on there to get a few little sparkles to finish it up. You can also make little bigger, bigger seeds with that. And then we will call that good. When you decide that you're finished with your painting, then drop your brushes in the wood jar before you're ready to clean them. And you can sign the painting using a pen. We use paint pens at the studio. Or um, in, this, in this case, you might need a paint pen because we have a dark background. So you'll need something a little bit lighter there. But you can use a tiny little brush to sign as well. But make sure you sign your work of art. And sometimes you, I put the date on them as well so that everybody knows who did it. You can always sign it on the back, but I usually sign mine in the lower corner somewhere, and then everybody will know who did the work of art. And uh, and then you can clean those brushes off really good. And make sure you finish your wine, because you want to uh, enjoy your evening. And I want to thank you for joining us tonight at Sipping and Painting Anthem. We appreciate your supporting us in this Zoom classroom. So thank you. I put Thea 